Welcome to an introduction to accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. This is the first podcast in a series about ratios and how to work out ratios for accounting. The podcast will take you through each ratio on a step-by-step basis. Ratio analysis is important in accounting because it presents both managers and investors with more information about companies. The information is helpful for determining how healthy a company is and how its performance is measuring up. Ratios are grouped into several kinds and we will deal with these in different podcasts. This first podcast is going to focus on profitability ratios. A ratio is a term that describes a relationship between two different items. We simply divide the quantity for one item by the quantity for the second item. We then usually multiply by 100 to give the answer as a percentage. Ratios are popular in accounting because they help present more information from the financial statements. They are useful tools to compare results for different years or between different companies. Let us take a simple example using a ratio to show the return on capital employed. This ratio is obtained by dividing the net profit for the year, which is the return, by the total capital employed. We shall look at figures for three different companies, A, B and C. The figures for each company have been taken from the financial statements and entered into our chart. When the ratios are calculated, we can see more easily that company C has the best return and we can order the three companies in terms of best to poorest as C, A, B. How might this be of use to internal managers? It gives them a tool to compare the performance with previous years to see if it might represent an improvement and to see if there is a trend that is emerging. Managers can also compare the results with any company plan, with any other similar companies regarded as competitors and with the averages for a particular industry. The different groups of ratios serve different purposes. In this podcast we are going to show you profitability ratios which are about assessing a company's ability to generate profit. In subsequent podcasts we will look at liquidity ratios that help determine if a company is likely to be able to pay current liabilities as they become due. Efficiency ratios tell us about management of resources. Gearing ratios are used to assess financial risk. And investor ratios assess investment returns. We will start by reminding ourselves that we are working with financial statements. Much of the information used for profitability ratios will be obtained from the income statement. Information will also be obtained from the balance sheet. This is the balance sheet that we will be using in this podcast. We must also be aware that there may be additional information needed to complete the calculations for some ratios. Sometimes these will be found in the notes to the accounts, but other information can be obtained from websites for details of historical share prices. We will start with the first ratio relating to profitability, the return on shareholders' equity. This ratio is given by dividing the profit after tax for ordinary shareholders by the ordinary share capital and reserves, which is usually the equity. Let us see where we get this information from. We find the net profit on the income statement. Here the net profit for the year is £63 million. And our total for ordinary shares and reserves from the balance sheet is given as £880 million. We substitute these figures into our equation for the ratio. 63 divided by 880, then multiply by 100. We have an answer of 7.2% for a return on shareholders' equity. 
If the company has preferred shares, then there is an adjustment. Dividends are removed from the numerator and preferred share capital from the denominator. This ratio is a measure of how well the company is making use of the capital provided by the shareholders. You may see the ratio referred to as the return on equity. Investors will see the ratio as giving information on the stewardship of management. The next ratio we consider is the return on capital employed. This is given by dividing the operating profit by the sum of the shareholders' equity and non-current liabilities. Let us see where these figures are. The operating profit we can take from the income statement. It is £129 million for the period in question. Retained earnings we find is £880 million and the non-current liabilities are £400 million. Both these are figures we can obtain from the balance sheet. We substitute these into our equation and we have 129 divided by the sum of 880 and 400. Then multiply by 100 to give a percentage. We have 10.1%. Instead of shareholders' equity and non-current liabilities, we can use total assets less current liabilities. The ratio gives an indication of how well long-term financing is being used to generate operating profit. It may be called return on investment in some texts. The next ratio is the operating profit margin, being the operating profit divided by the sales revenue. Let us find the figures we need for this ratio. The operating profit of £129 million is obtained from the income statement. The sales revenue of £720 million is also obtained from the income statement. Now we put in these figures, 129 divided by 720, multiply by 100 for the percentage, we have a figure of 17.9% as the operating profit margin. This ratio tells us how well a company is managing its expenses. For every one pound of sales, the company generates 17.9 pence of operating profit. The gross profit margin is given by dividing the gross profit by the sales revenue. So let's find the figures here. Both figures are obtained from the income statement. Sales revenue is £720 million and the gross profit is £288 million. The calculation becomes 288 divided by 720, then multiply by 100 to get the percentage. We have a gross profit margin of 40%. This ratio measures the profitability before taking into account any other expenses other than the cost of buying the goods that were sold. Competitors tend to be interested in this ratio since small changes can be significant. Now the total assets usage. We divide sales revenue by total assets. Let us locate the figures. Sales revenue is £720 million and is found on the income statement. Total assets can be found on the balance sheet and amount to £1,375 million. We divide £720 by £1,375 and have an answer of 0.52. Note that this time we have a figure and not a percentage. We can express this by saying that the company has generated 52 pence in sales for every pound of assets. The ratio indicates how well the company has used its assets. But we need to remember that a company investing in new assets will find that the ratio becomes lowered until those assets come into the production process. 
This ends our first podcast on ratios, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For further information on Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.